Hey guys, Snows here with Hardware Canucks, and you might not know this about me, but I'm the type of person who gets more excited about budget stuff rather than anything high end. I mean, give me that bang for the buck and I'm happy. And that's why I'm here talking about the new RX 6500 XT. It's a card that I hoped would have been a perfect fit for people who needed a new GPU and just couldn't find one, or for people that can't afford the crazy markups that are out there right now. Now, notice I said hoped. Well, yeah, that didn't happen for a bunch of reasons, but let's start right at the top with the specifications. Compared to its bigger brother, the RX 6600, the 6500 XT got some major bits chopped off, but it's also more efficient. There's a lot less stream processors, only 16 megabytes of infinity cache, and while the memory speed gets a bump to 18 gigabits per second, there's only four gigabytes on tap here. Clock speeds do get a big bump, but it looks like the major issue is the ridiculously narrow 64-bit memory interface with just 144 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. I mean, AMD probably is hoping that the Infinity Cache will take up some of that slack, but that's only gonna take you so far, since a lot of games these days are pretty bandwidth hungry. And when we look at its predecessor, there's a bit of a sticky situation against the 5500 XT 2 Remember, the 6500 XT is supposed to be replacing this thing, but the older card has more cores, a wider memory bus, more bandwidth, and it came with either four or eight gigabytes of uh, GDDR6 memory. So on paper, it looks like AMD's actually regressed in a bunch of areas. But before we talk performance, let's talk about launch prices, because of course there's a reason to complain here too. And that's because AMD is pricing the 6500 XT the same as the 5500 XT, eight gigabytes, and a good $30 more than the four gigabyte version of the now two year old card. And of course, 199 is the suggested pricing. All the board partners that we talked about mentioned that it will probably hit the store shelves between 250 and 300 $350. Yikes. Oh, and speaking of pricing, I guess now is a good time to pay some bills. So roll it. How would you define evolution? Perhaps constant improvement based on earlier iterations, developing a better product for the future, going from big to small, or simply building something so feature packed I have no time to cover everything. I mean, come on, Lian Lee, this new case is incredible. And finally, a proper tagline that absolutely fits. Evolution continues. Whew. The new O11 Dynamic Evo by Lian Lee. You gotta check it out below. So with that out of the way, some people think that AMD cut the balls off of this card to make it less appealing to miners. But look, if you really think that AMD cares about selling less cards, I've got a bridge that I wanna sell you. Because to me, the 6500 XT just feels like a convenient excuse to push a gimped GPU into the market that's willing to buy pretty much anything these days. And speaking of pricing being almost irrelevant, this is one time I'm glad most board partners are taking a bit of a break from their ridiculously huge and stupidly expensive three fan designs. The vast majority of cards are pretty compact with one or two fans. There are a few exceptions, of course. A great example of good cooler design is the card that I've got right here, the Gigabyte Eagle. I mean, look at this thing. It's exactly what I'd want from a lower priced GPU. It's compact, it's two slots, it uses a single six pin power connector, and it doesn't have all sorts of flashy crap all over the place. It doesn't even have a backplate, which I'm perfectly fine with. I just hope that this hits 199, but that's about as likely as a Stormtrooper making an accurate shot. There's also a pretty big limitation for all of you guys who might want to use three monitors. Yeah, you just can't. The 6500 XT only supports two native display outputs. That's it. And yeah, it's less than the three or four outputs found on most 5500 XTs. I'm just gonna keep comparing them because it makes no sense to me. What the heck, AMD? And that's not it either, no. It gets worse because buried in the specs of this thing is this. While the 5500 XT's media engine supported decoding and encoding of H.264 and H.265 content, there's absolutely no video encoding support here. None. Nada. Zilch. Oh, and AV1 decoding, a feature that was added to every other RX 6000 card, yep, you won't find it here. What that means is you can't use the video engine for acceleration on streaming apps like OBS, for video editing, or for simple transcoding apps like Handbrake. The option is completely gone, even though the older RX 5500 series had all of these options, except for the AV1 support. For example, that means NLEs like Adobe Media Encoder revert back to software encoding while Resolve Studio 
Studio won't even allow you to render a video using H.265. Remember, these additional capabilities are a key selling point for every single graphics card today. And AMD disabling them is just, well, a huge step backwards. Basically, it means renders that usually take a few minutes to complete end up taking a hell of a lot longer, even on a high-end system like on mine. Or in the case of Resolve, you'll need to step back to H.264 and still deal with longer renders. Honestly, not having the GPU's encoding engine backstopping mid-level CPUs is gonna be a huge loss for anyone that wants to do creative work with a 6500 XT. On the positive side though, it doesn't affect OpenCL GPU acceleration, so you can still use it for scene rendering in apps like Blender. In those cases, the RDNA 2 architecture allows it to beat the RX 580, but still only match the RX 5500 XT. Oh yeah, and it also gets beaten like a pinata by the three-year-old GTX 1660. Something else that I need to mention is AMD's use of only four PCIe lanes on this card. On paper, at least, there's more than enough bandwidth when it's installed on a Gen 4 motherboard. But a lot of people are probably looking at the 6500 XT as a simple drop-in replacement for an older GPU that was running on a Gen 3 motherboard. And does running it with just four PCIe Gen 4 lanes cause a bottleneck? Well, the answer to that is yes and no. Some games like Doom, Jedi, and Overwatch aren't affected at all. But others, man, they're just taking it right on the chin and see their frame rates smashed downwards on a Gen 3 interface. If you look a bit closer, a lot of the titles that are affected are a bit more CPU bound. And that's bad news since most popular competitive shooters and other online games fall into that category. I really can't emphasize enough how bad this is for the RX 6500 XT. Here, you'd be paying good money for this card as an upgrade for an older system, and depending on the game, it won't be getting anywhere near the performance AMD promised. And at this point, I'd just say no thanks and walk away. Seriously. Now with all of that out of the way, let's talk price to performance. I already mentioned the RX 5500 XT and the RX 6600, but remember that the RX 580 launched at about the same price point, and check out those Nvidia cards. Man, those were the good old days when you could buy some amazing performance for about 200 bucks. I mean, the GTX 1660 is still one of the most popular graphics cards on the planet. And as we go through the performance charts, it's obvious why this 1660 is still so popular. Even now, almost three years after it launched for just over 200 bucks, it still stays ahead of the RX 6500 XT. That's especially true for games that rely a bit more on memory bandwidth, and Doom is a perfect example of that. No amount of infinity cash can save the cards in those situations. And it's not just the Nvidia cards making the 6500 look bad. The RX 5500 XT 4GB is literally a carbon copy right across every single benchmark. And if you take the cut down features into account, it's almost like AMD regressed in the lower end GPU market. And if you go a little further back to the RX 580, there's been almost no forward progress at all. It's like they've been releasing GPUs with the same performance for the same price for almost five damn years. The other problem is how the 6500 XT compares to the 6600. I mean, you can drive a freaking truck through the space between them. The gap is huge. Looking at this, it just feels like the 6500 XT's performance has just been gimped way too much. But it's not all bad. The only thing that sort of saves AMD's bacon here is power consumption, since even though it's running at ultra high frequencies here, the RDNA 2 architecture is still very efficient. But when it comes to gaming, I mean, people care less about how much electricity they're using and more about the raw performance. All right, so I guess that kind of wraps things up a bit here. And yeah, this is another disappointment. And even if we take a step away from the insane pricing situation that we have right now with the shortage and all, what AMD has basically done here is re-release the 5500 XT with about the same performance and less features. They've proven what everyone has been saying, the lower end GPU market has completely stagnated. I mean, the GTX 1660 came out almost three years ago, and here we are with a GPU launched at pretty much the same price that doesn't get one iota more performance. In fact, it's worse. Plus, unlike this thing, every Nvidia card 
it has full encoding and decoding capabilities. And no, the performance of ray tracing is not something that we should care about in this market. This whole situation has become a really sad joke by this point. It's pretty much an insult for gamers who've been waiting for a great budget option for years now. Meanwhile, all the 6500 XT proves is that there's no good guys anymore, just happy shareholders. In any case, guys, that's pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Leave a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to discuss this a little further. Uh, I know a lot of you are going to be vocal about this. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Man, the comments are gonna be really interesting. As a person who builds computers for family and stuff like that, I don't judge what they're gonna do. They could be gaming, they could be doing creative workloads. I just want them to have something that works, and this is an insult to me. Yeah, see ya.